Welcome to a video on graphing the quadric surface, the ellipsoid. As discussed in the introductory video, a quadric surface is given by a degree two equation in the following form. However, we're not going to be considering the rotation of these quadric surfaces, so our equations will not contain an xy term, xz term, or yz term. And this video will focus only on how to graph an ellipsoid. The degree and sign of the degree two terms, as well as the terms that are present, help us determine which of the six quadric surfaces is given. Now to graph a quadric surface, it's often helpful to graph the x, y, x, z, and y, z traces, which is where the surface will intersect each of these three planes. And sometimes there may not be a trace in the given plane, but if we make a trace that's parallel to the given plane, there usually will be. Now to determine the x, y trace, we're going to set z equal to zero. To determine the x, z trace, we'll set y equal to zero. And to determine the y, z trace, we'll set x equal to zero. So here's the form for an ellipsoid. Notice all three squared terms are present. They're all positive when the equation is equal to one. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at an example where we determine each of the three traces. So if we want to determine the x, y trace, we're going to set z equal to zero which will give us the equation x squared over 16 plus y squared over 25 is equal to one. And we know from our study of conic sections, this is an ellipse centered at the origin or the point zero, zero. The major axis will be the vertical axis. And since our denominator is 25, we can go up five units and down five units to determine the endpoints of the major axis. So this is scaled by twos. So this would be positive five. This would be negative five. So those will be the endpoints of the major axis. And the minor axis will be four units to the left and four units to the right of the origin. So here's four and here's negative four. These are the endpoints of the minor axis. So the x, y trace would be the ellipse passing through these four points looking something like this. Next, to determine the x, z trace, we'll set y, the missing variable, equal to zero. So that'll give us x squared over 16 plus z squared over four equals one. So now we're gonna call this the x axis, this the z axis, and we have another ellipse. Now the major axis will be horizontal with a length of eight, so from the origin, we'll go four units to the right, four units to the left. Again, this is scaled by twos. And the vertical axis, now the z-axis, will be our minor axis. Since here we'd have c squared equals four and c equal to two, we'll go up two units and down two units on the z-axis. This will give us where the ellipsoid intersects the xz plane. Again, another ellipse, but a different shaped ellipse. And then lastly, to determine the yz trace, we'll set x equal to zero. So we'd have y squared over 25 plus z squared over four equals one. Notice now we're calling the horizontal axis y and the vertical axis z. So b squared is 25, so b is equal to five. So we'll go five units to the right and the five units to the left for the major axis. And we'll go up and down two units again for the minor axis. These are the endpoints of the major and minor axis. So the ellipsoid intersects the yz plane in this shaped ellipse. Now at this point, we could try to graph it by hand, but graphing software is so readily available these days, we're gonna go ahead and graph this quadric surface using maple. It would look something like this. And again, if we take a look at where this surface intersects the three planes, it would look just like what we had here as our three traces. If we take a look at this in a more dynamic graph, it'll become much more obvious. Here's the graph of our ellipsoid in space. If we take a look at the x, y trace, or view this looking down on the x, y plane, here you can see the x, y trace. 
Now if we take a look at this from the view of the XZ plane, as we see here, we can see our XZ trace, the ellipse here, 